What's up, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Welcome to the BitLab Academy daily live stream. My name is Kelly Kellum. Welcome to the show. You can find all my information right there at the Kelly Kellum. You can see it ding, ding, ding right there. Make sure you're following me over there on Twitterverse right here. You can find me at Kelly Kellum, K-E-L-L-Y-K-E-L-L-A-M. Make sure I have the blue check and the hit logo that you see right here. Oh, I was wondering what that audio is coming from. Well, we're going to go ahead and mute that real quick. Forgot it was on a phone in my pocket. Uh, how's everybody doing? How you feeling? How you looking? Uh, let's go ahead and close out Discord because it's making my computer lag. We got a lot of stuff to cover today. We're going to be talking about a couple big things in the news. Uh, Tiger, Tiger Global, uh, Deutsche Bank, HSBC, uh, Fidelity, uh, Citadel, Schwab. I mean, all kind of different stuff going on. Some things that may indicate that Maybe Ginsler's gone too far. Is he going to be out? If so, how soon? What is that going to mean for the crypto universe here? And of course, we've got some stuff going on with Fed now and crypto. Uh, we're going to talk, be talking about a little bit of the Bitcoin volume. And, uh, you know, we're seeing signs of uh, life, people still accumulating in all of this turmoil, which is incredibly powerful when you think about everything going on within the, uh, the digital asset ecosystem. We're going to be looking at What's going on with Bitcoin, as well as a number of other alts? Uh, we're going to be we're going to be looking at all kinds of stuff today. Uh, Bitcoin dominance, and of course, if you haven't yet, make sure you check out BitLabAcademy.com. Of course, we break down a ton of things here on the BitLab Daily Show. But I want to encourage everybody: if you want to go deeper, come and get involved. BitLabAcademy.com. Uh, I think this uh, coming Monday, so uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, uh, I will be turning off the coupon. The give me 30. So if you want to uh, take advantage of that 30% off your first month, uh, you can use give me 30 at checkout. Just come over here, click on start your education for free. And also remember, you can share this with your friends and family. And uh, right in here, if you click right here, this is basically the basics, Bitcoin 101, blockchain 101, a crypto, be uh, like I think an 18 or 20 lesson crypto beginners course it gives you basic introductory to a lot of the the things that you need to understand, you know, what is RSI? What is, what is volume? Okay. What is, um, there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, if you want the all access to really take your education further, click right here. If you, if you add this to your cart and you put, give me 30, that'll give you 30% off. And of course, if you want to add the indicators as well as the all access, just click up right here. And you also get, uh, you also look at that. Let's paint it orange. You'll also get access to the Ray Pulse indicator. By the way, we have some major, major, major updates coming with all of our indicator package complete overhaul uh, that's going to be coming in August. So uh, really looking forward to that. Really looking forward to that. So let's get back over here. And just before we dive into everything, make sure you come over to BitLab Academy Twitter page. Give us that follow. Join us here and uh, share today's post, which is right here. Gensler out. Banks in. Uh, hit this retweet. Hit this like. Uh, hit the like button. You'll be entered to win. Uh, we will be drawing. I'm not sure if it's going to be Friday or uh, next week, but uh, I'll, we, we're still going to do a giveaway. But I, I think I think Friday I'll be moving into my new apartment. So we'll see about that. Maybe I'll get away with doing a morning stream and then going to move because I want to be here with you all. I love you all. So with that, how's everybody doing? How are you feeling? Throw a one in chat if you woke up and feeling grateful today. Throw a two in chat if you're if you're. And I mean, everybody's struggling a little bit, but throw it to a chat uh, in chat. If you're, if you're having some things you're, you're trying to tackle in life and you're trying to find your way back to gratitude and it's okay. We can't be, our aim could be to be grateful every day, but we can't actually just be Mr. Perfect and Mrs. Perfect. We have life's troubles. We have tribulations. We have pressures. We have stresses. We have, ah, ah, we have life, but that's why we're here. We are a community. We are together. I'm your follower and you are mine. God is in every one of us in different ways. So let's all be, let's all be a bit of a force for good here. Army Piper, do you want to come on the show today? Uh, I meant to ask you earlier this morning, if you want to come on and do some TA, uh, to, you know, in the, shoot me a DM on Twitter. We can uh, bring you on the last, uh, bring you on for a period in a bit. Love to have you back on. Shout out to everybody in chat. We got so many people in here already that we're, I'm looking at the wrong window, of course. Uh, we got who we got in here. We got everybody. We got you and you and you and you. And you. We got everybody. Alexander G, Crimson Caravan Company, King Peasant, Granny's Garden, uh, Sawtooth Hiker, GS, Mike Vollmer, 
Uh, who else we got in here? Okay, let me go ahead and dismiss this. I cannot see. There we go. Uh, Rafiq Kafour. Uh, who else we got? Crimson Caravan Company. A mellow fellow. We got everybody in here. How's everybody doing? How you feeling? I already asked you that. I just get uh, I get so excited to do the the stream the 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 prepare the preparing for the streams every morning is always exciting because I know I get to share I get to share what's going on in the market with you all and we get to be here come here and be a community. Went from a two to a one. You know what? Let's be honest. Not everybody can be grateful all the time. Not everybody can be happy all the time. Not everybody can be completely balanced all the time. Sometimes we have those moments where life just takes us out of what, what our, our goal of, as a person, you know, to be balanced and well-meaning and grateful, all those things, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's our ideal, right? Be all, always able to be a light when we walk in the room. And sometimes we fall off that path and that's okay. Same thing happens with trading. Sometimes we fall off the path of making good decisions. So what do we do? Trading is such a good example of what's going on in your everyday life because if you're not able to, when you fall off the path, if you're not able to get back on it quickly, you can't sit there and just beat yourself up and, you know, lament and, you know, you suck. And, uh, this isn't me. No, let all that nonsense go. When you fall off the path of whatever it is, your weight loss goals, your exercise goals, your work goals, your strategy in trading, the goal is, to not take that so personally, even though you are the one that fell off the path, your job is to be like a goldfish. Forget, forget that you made an error, learn from it, but don't lament on it. Ask yourself, what's my quickest path to get back on the path? What's my quickest, uh, what's the quickest means for me to get back on the path so that I don't do myself any more harm? So I don't do my friends or family or my portfolio any more harm. So with that being said, Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, da -da 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 ding that bell, and let's go ahead and get this going. So, what is going on today in the markets? Well, first off, let's go ahead and dive in here. Let's talk about a couple things contextually first, and then we're going to dive in and doing a bunch of charts. First step here is Tiger, Tiger, uh, Tiger Global. Tiger Global is one of the, one of the largest... I always get the hiccups. I think I drink too coffee too fast before we start. Tiger Global is one of the one of the largest uh, VC funds. Uh, you know, it's a huge fund. They've got, I think, let's see, I, I searched earlier about fifty three billion dollars under management. Uh, where is it at? Assets. Uh, yeah, yeah, fifty eight billion dollars assets under management as of September twenty twenty two. So of course that number is probably going to be a little bit different now. Maybe maybe up, maybe down. Uh, I would probably assume down if they're uh, forcing, uh, you know, they're forced to sort of rebalance their portfolios. They're trying to offload about $6 billion. Uh, they're trying to get about $6 billion for a new fund. Uh, but we can see here that uh, so far the investors have only committed about $2 billion. So that's only, uh, you know, only 30, 33% of the total amount they're looking for. So this, the reason why I bring this up, we're talking about Bitcoin. We're talking about uh, digital assets, Let's talk about investing, right? In the digital asset ecosystem. Why do we care about this? What this tells me is that uh, although there are cer certain sectors of the traditional asset ecosystem that are performing well, the large in part, the large majority of the market is still fa fairly tepid. You know, about, about seven or eight stocks in the tech sector make up about 93% of the gains that, have, that we've seen in, in 2023 so far. So what does that tell us? We see the market going up, but if 93% of that, you know, of that increase uh, in the market is really only eight stocks, then is this going to buoy the rest of the market? Well, currently it has. Is it going to start pulling those other things up? Is it going to slowly start you know, being an anchor, like a magnet to those other uh, underperforming assets? And the question then is, are those other assets underperforming or is there a new sort of tech bubble going on with these eight assets that are just ballooning right now? Well, we're seeing this right now. If they're only able to raise about 2 billion of the six and they're one of the preeminent VC, uh, you know, basically large hedge fund, uh, uh, you know, hedge, hedge fund uh, manager uh, company. 
what does that say about the the temperature of the you know the risk market? It shows that there's still a little bit of uh, uncertainty that's out there. So I just wanted to point that out. Now, what I really want to talk about today, we're going to be talking uh, briefly about a bunch of the stuff here. Has, the first question is, has everybody that's watching right now, we have 166. Let's see how early we can do this. We have 166 people in the room right now. Let's get 166 likes. Everybody right now, hit that like button. If you're on mobile, exit out of chat, hit the like button, come back into mobile. Let's see if we can, oh, we're up at 177 now. Let's, let's, uh, uh, let's get everybody in here hitting that like button. Let's get involved. Let's drive this forward with YouTube so they can share this to other people. You're letting YouTube know you like crypto content, not just for this channel, but for the entire crypto ecosystem. So coming back over here, I wanted to talk a little bit about Deutsche Bank with over $1.4 trillion in assets under management seeks crypto custody license for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple. Now, yet again, what are we seeing? We're seeing a strengthening of the the how do I want to phrase this? We're seeing a strengthening of the, 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 the major caps and not all of them, a select grouping of them. We got Bitcoin, which is something that stands on its own within the digital asset ecosystem. I think of Bitcoin separately from the rest of the crypto market because of the history it has and also because of the security and decentralization it has. Uh, it, it's so much stronger than the rest of the market. You know, remember, if we come over here and we look at coin market cap, coinmarketcap.com, we can see we have over a trillion dollar market cap for all of the digital asset ecosystem. And if we look right here, Bitcoin dominance is at 48.6%. I believe that's a little wrong uh, because looking here, that must not have updated. Looking here, we're seeing dominance at 50%. Well, what does this mean? Who the hell, what is this percentage? We, we want to know prices. Well, when we're trying to identify what assets to get into, where to navigate our portfolios, where to cyclically move the liquidity in our portfolios from one asset to another, when to get into something, when to get out of something in different parts of this digital asset sector. We see Bitcoin right now has done what? Well, let's go ahead and double click uh, on this chart, minimize these other indicators. We're going to go to the three day. We can see here, look at this sideways price, uh, not price actions. Look at the sideways action on this chart. And what have we done? We have broken out of the sideways action. Now, the next level up, we see the 382 is right here about 52%. The next level up here is uh, up 57, 58%. And what this is signifying is how much money, how much capital as a percentage to the entire digital asset ecosystem. So if there's about a 1 trillion, 1.1 trillion market cap for all the liquidity, all the money, all the value that's in the crypto uh, ecosystem, then this dominance is suggesting that 50%. So would that be a little over 500 billion? Well, if we look at the crypto market cap, look at this. Well, look at that market cap, a little over 500 billion. So this makes up over half of the entire value of everything in the digital asset sector. And what do we have? Uh, Coin market cap shows we have about nearly 26,000 cryptos, and yet Bitcoin accounts for over half of the money. <coughs> over half the money that is in the digital asset sector. So what does this mean? Well, when we look at this and we're looking at this, if we're looking at this like an asset itself, hold on a second. Excuse me. If we're looking at this like an asset, you would trade this breakout. We've got a bit of a bull flag, a, a something. I, and this is kind of a little ugly, but we can call it almost a bull flag, bull pay. It's not really because of how long this is. But either way, we're hugging this upper resistance. And the, the, the key point here is we have the support down here, support being a level at which price action tends to bounce off of, it holds support, and we have resistance, a price action level at which price tends to reject at and get pushed back down. We see the support, resistance, support, resistance actually front ran this. Support kind of pushes up, resistance, support, 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 and then this tap, 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 tap. It's like a little hammer tapping on a glass ceiling. I tapped enough times and it's broken through. If this was an asset, you could have traded this breakout of this resistance line right here, or to be more conservative, this resistance line right here, since it was a, a much stronger resistance because it held for several years. 
if that's the case and we're seeing that this uh, dominance, if we're looking at it like an asset itself, this action on this chart, these candle patterns broken through here, what we'd be looking for is potentially a little bit of a pullback, just like this, uh, this red line shows, potentially a little bit of a pullback, retesting this, uh, this resistance level here, flipping it to support, and then moving up to here. It doesn't have to do that. It can also just go up from here. Uh, but I'd be looking for a little bit of resistance up here, at the, you know, another 2 to 3% uh, to above us. So what does that mean for the digital asset ecosystem? This is why it's important to understand what's in your portfolio, why the hell it's in your portfolio, and what your time horizon is for each one of those assets. If you're looking for gains in the next month or two, this right here is suggesting Bitcoin, more likely than not, is probably a better option than most altcoins. Unless this comes down, loses its level, and starts coming down, this is suggesting strength for Bitcoin. Look at look at this look at this uh, the velocity of this drop right here on this uh, Bitcoin dominance. There's not really any meaningful points. Well, we have the three eight two here, this fib of this entire move. But this is also perfectly in line with this previous support support level right here. And look at this. We can also see right here, this kind of held right, it tried to take it back up, got rejected and came down. So there's a lot of indication that this is likely a target for the dominance right here at the 52% level, 5203 to 5225, uh, which is suggesting that there's probably going to be some strength in Bitcoin for the time being, as opposed to the altcoin market generally. Does this mean that other altcoins, independent altcoins, meaning not the entire market, but can we see certain altcoins on their own just absolutely have, you know, performed very well against Bitcoin? Yes, we can see that. But when we're looking at this like an index, what do I mean by index? Well, we can look over here at the total two. This is a total two. This is the entire altcoin market. This is Ethereum and all the alts. It's basically the entire digital asset ecosystem minus Bitcoin. So this is an index. What's going on there? This is an index. There we go. I don't know why that was so spread out. There we go. This is an index of the total market, all the market caps, all the liquidity in every digital asset in the, in the crypto ecosystem. And what we're seeing is you see this coming down while, actually, while the dominance is going up on Bitcoin. This is because Bitcoin is performing better than the altcoin market. Now, what we really want to watch for here, uh, when we, if, which I'm sure, I, I, I'm positive that most of you probably have a balance between Bitcoin and altcoins. If you have only Bitcoin, throw BTC in chat. If you have only altcoins, put alts in chat. If you have both BTC and alts, put diversified in chat. Now, what we want to see here is when we're paying attention to this, is this going to lose this level and come down here and test all the way down here, which is a pretty significant, that's about a 25% drop. How do I know that? Well, I could tell just by looking, because this is, you see on the right here, oh, my, my apologies, my apologies. Just brought. Sorry about that. We can see that the, 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 on, on uh, the total two here, that if we lose this level, this is right about five, 520 billion. Down here is about 400 billion. So that's about a 25% drop down to this level. If this were to happen, this is going to be, this is going to be sort of screaming uh, pain for people holding open longs on altcoins, especially if they're looking for a return on those longs in the, in the near future. Now, if you're holding a short here, I'm not saying too short anything, but for people that are, if, if you were to be holding a short here and this is this level's loss and it comes down to here, that's going to be probably a pretty, uh, pretty profitable move. The point here is we need to make sure that we are diversified between all things. Now we're going to come back and do a bunch of all, uh, we're going to come back and do a bunch of, Okay, look, I see a lot of diversifieds in here. This is good. Uh, I don't see any just BTC. All righty. Let's see here. I'm just seeing if we got any important uh, things. Okay, everybody, have you hit that like button? Hit that like button. Show a sucker some love.
Let me get a sip of my coffee. 205 people in here, 110 likes. Let's get that up. Now, we want to look at this. So, Deutsche Bank, 1.4 trillion in assets, looking for crypto or seeking crypto custody license for Bitcoin and Ethereum. Another major bank. Now, remember, they're a little bit of, a little bit of questionable turmoil when all the banking collapses were happening. And who's who's to know, who's to say, you know, where they're at now with all that. But they are a major player in the global bank banking uh uh world we're building out our digital assets and custody business this is going to be the new i don't want to call it a fad this is going to be the new trend with all these institutions all these businesses all these corporations all these people that have been so opposed to crypto for so many years you're going to start seeing the dominoes fall and they are going to start one after the other following suit and getting into the digital asset ecosystem why do i say that well, BlackRock is, the lar- I think, the largest asset manager on planet Earth. And therefore, a, they, they already submitted a, an application for their ETF. And, you know, they have like a 99% hit rate, uh, hit rate on ETFs when they apply for them. And in addition to that, they, I mean, Larry Fink, I believe is his name. Uh, is it, yeah, I believe it doesn't matter. CEO of BlackRock is probably more powerful, probably more powerful than, Every world leader, probably maybe on par with the U.S. president, but I mean, he's up there having that much control of, of money and money is what moves the needle on any decision in the world. Fortunately or unfortunately, that's just the way it is. They have all the ends with all the people. I guarantee you before they put in their ETF, they had some government official that was part of the regulatory, you know, uh, uh, What's the company? Uh, what's uh, the people? Uh, they had people on the inside that gave them, made sure all the I's were dotted and the T's were crossed. That's my point there. So if we're seeing this, you know, huge stamp of approval of one of the most preeminent, uh, the most preeminent, uh, you know, uh, company on earth. Now, are they morally good? That's an argument we can have another day. Talk to Drew. Uh, talk to Drew here. Uh, from the hit network, he, he, you know, he, he'll argue you hours on end about why it's not a good thing. But in the short term, I think it's actually going to be something that's going to be incredibly powerful for the market. Not only BlackRock getting in, but now we're seeing Deutsche Bank. Uh, you know, if you think about the number of uh, uh, number of Fortune 500 exposure to Mike. Largest share. All right, let's do that. So there's a lot of companies out there. A lot of companies out there that don't have exposure to Bitcoin. But if you come over and you look at the, uh, here we go. You look at their shareholders and you look at MicroStrategy. MicroStrategy being Michael Saylor's company. Micro strategy essentially is kind of a backdoor ETF, traditional asset exposure to Bitcoin because their company was worth about four or five hundred million dollars before micro strategy. Michael Saylor started buying all that Bitcoin. Now they have about one hundred and forty five hundred and fifty thousand Bitcoin. Their company is worth, I don't even know, four to six billion dollars. Their company, regardless of the fact that they still do regardless of the fact that they still do um, soft software is a traditional stock market asset that you can buy. You can buy MSTR master uh, for micro strategy to get exposure to Bitcoin. And look at this. We have capital research. We got the Vanguard group. This is uh, uh, and then we got BlackRock. We got fidelity. Fidelity is also likely to be filing for an ETF. They've got a couple trillion dollars under management. Uh, SSGA, uh, Morgan Stanley, Capital Research, uh, Toresco. Uh, we got American Funds Growth, Vanguard, Small Cap, American Funds, iShares. Uh, I mean, the the amount of, I mean, it's it's ridiculous how much cloak and dagger is going on with the banks right now and them still trying to get exposure to Bitcoin, which they've said is bad for so many years. Let's talk about the narrative that they were trying to shape when they did that. This is why it's important to understand the context 
and to understand what the true motivations of any player that's in the digital asset ecosystem or against it are. JP Morgan, Jamie Dimon, talking so bad about Bitcoin and, and Ethereum and digital assets for so many years. And at the same time, buying exposure through MicroStrategy, through uh, Grayscale, through, uh, you know, basically building out their own blockchain protocols. They're, they're, they're not trying to actually stop Bitcoin. They're trying to limit the growth of it so that they can get their claws in it and in this early stage so that they can maintain some control in this new digital world. Think about that. That's really what's going on here. Play it chess. That's right, crypto brat. Crypto meme, after the hate, they join you. That's right. Man, we got some, we got, we got some smart individuals in here. I love all you. Karen Swagger Harris, how are you doing? Uh, all right. So let's go ahead and move on to the next story. Uh, that, I just wanted to point that out. They, I, and I believe that the... I believe that they're looking for, I could be wrong. Let me, Command F, Germany. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, now we're looking at this. HSBC files trademark applications, plans to launch NFTs and banking services. Remember, everything we have in the real world is likely going to be duplicated, and uh, there's going to be a version of it in some regard, in the metaverse. Along with that, you're going to need, well, this is a funny thing. HSBC, because they're a bank, they think that you're going to need banking services in the metaverse. And I could, I could, see, I could see some use cases for that. But in reality, you could also just utilize what blockchain and, and protocols that are, that are part of that, uh, that metaverse to do all these banking services. But I could see some case for that. But they're looking at it like a bank. They want to, uh, you know, maintain... The same kind of controls they have in, uh, in basically the physical realm in the digital asset, eco, you know, in the metaverse. But the interesting thing is they're, they're, they're foraying into NFTs and banking services in the, in the metaverse. This is going to be, uh, you know, another major, major player on the global stage. HSBC continues its move into the metaverse. The company has filed, for, uh, filed a new trademark application covering metaverse banking, consulting, financial services, Virtual credit cards, NFTs, NFT-backed media. This is going to be something I don't think uh, most people, especially people not in the crypto asset ecosystem, um, and even most of the people that are in digital assets, a lot of people have bought two or three things, and they think they're, you know, and this is no slight on any of you. I've done this before myself. I buy something, and I sell it, and I buy one more thing, and I tell people I'm a crypto trader. That's not what crypto trading is. Uh, you need to really determine whether you are a trader or an investor, and you also need to back it up with uh, not tens or hundreds, but thousands of trades to build your strategy and build your consistency and build your capital, your 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 risk management uh, strategies so that you can be consistent in this. And most people in the digital asset sector are not prepared for the explosion of NFTs that is sure to come. And it's not just NFT back to media, because think about this. We have so many digital we have so many new AI uh, advancements, and is it Metcalf's Law? I believe it's Metcalf's Law. Metcalf's Law. Yeah, uh, and is it Moore's Law is the other one? I get my law. I get my laws. I get my, my law is messed up. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of a combination between Metcalf's Law and Moore's Law in that as we see uh, the advancement of AI, think about how much more efficient AI is, not only when we're using it to speed up our efficiency, but then once those things get trained to create their own things, uh, think about AI, deep fakes, think about you know election cycles and the inability to identify the authenticity of the media you're looking at. That's going to be solved through NFT back media. So regardless if you if you don't give a shit, apologize for the language. And I got to keep it real with you all. If you don't care about bored apes and you don't care about you know crypto zombies or you know name the NFT, doesn't matter. If you think you don't care about those JPEGs, the underlying technology is what you should care about because NFT back media is going to be something that is not only needed it's going to be a requirement uh in the coming years 
in addition to digital, uh, basically, uh, government documents, uh, licenses, registration, uh, proof of ownership, proof. Of, all this stuff is moving to medical files. All this stuff's going to be slowly moving towards NFTs. And so any company that starts to really start to build out of this has an opportunity to capture a huge portion of the market. And so uh, it's, it's very, yeah, <laughs> Wob Bilson, Murphy's Law. That's what we're looking at right now, Murphy's Law, yeah. Hold on, let me look at this. Uh, has everybody hit the like button? I'm turning off this. Uh, okay, breaking Romanian prosecutor you sees 21 Bitcoin from Andrew Tate. Well, I appreciate that. That's, that's, that's not breaking news that we need to talk about here. Um, okay, yeah. So next thing I want to talk about, this also ties in with the HSBC and the uh, Deutsche Bank. Crypto exchange backed by Citadel Securities Fidelity Schwab starts operations. EDX markets won't directly handle customers' digital assets or directly serve individual investors. So that's interesting. Uh, we have Citadel, which one of the which is one of the largest. Uh, I mean, I mean, Citadel is massive. Let's see, Citadel, sixty-two point three billion assets under management. That's just, I mean. Major, major player. This is one of those uh, banks that was uh, part of the whole, uh, uh, what was it called? Uh, not Game, GameStop, uh, Wall Street Bets. I mean, it's the system versus the man. And we can see Operation Choke Point just coming further and further into play when banks are, you know, why are banks moving into the asset ecosystem now, the digital asset ecosystem? Because Operation 2.0 has had a tremendous, and I don't mean in a good way, but a major impact on where control lies within the digital asset ecosystem. Does that mean they're going to take your crypto? Well, if you trade emotionally and you sell to them because you get scared on a wick or whatever, but also remember, selling is not always capitulating. If you're selling an asset, for instance, a, a mid-cap or a micro-cap coin, if you're selling a coin, uh, let's say, for instance, Cardano is a good example of that. And I love Cardano, but if we look at Cardano, ADA, BT, if we look at Cardano, uh, look at this. This is Cardano versus Bitcoin. If you sold at any point here, you know, to here, um, if you sold at any point from here to here, Cardano, but you sold it for Bitcoin, I would not call that a capitulation. I would call a capitulation selling Cardano to U.S. dollars. If you're just getting out because you're scared, then you haven't learned anything. Rebalancing your portfolio to harness the most likely and the best gains possible based on the current ecosystem of what's happening in the, in the digital asset ecosystem that's making smart money moves. So, and I'm not suggesting anybody buy or sell anything, but my point is when you're looking at your charts, don't just look at the ADA to USD chart or the phantom to USD chart or the Ethereum to USD chart. See how things are, are, are performing against Bitcoin and try to make sure if they're performing poorly, if they're in a downtrend like this and you come up, you have a lower low and then a lower high, then you can, you can especially when we're seeing this, this very uncertain uh, very uncertain uh, ecosystem and landscape for the digital asset sector, especially for altcoins, because of all these securities uh, allegations from Gary Gensler, then navigating the, where your portfolio is balanced and making sure you're protecting your capital by potentially starting, this is something that I have done as well. I told you about it last uh, early this week or, or last week, I think it was last week, I moved out of quite a few positions on altcoins. I moved some of it into Bitcoin. I moved, uh, I put a little extra into Bencoin just because I was like, I'm taking all this money out. Uh, I'm rebalancing. I'm going to put a little Bencoins dropped. I threw some into Bencoin, but I readjusted my portfolio to take advantage of the some of the profits I had to rebalance to protect myself from some of the drops in the market that were happening on a lot of altcoins. I took advantage of what's going on in the market. I took advantage of price action that I'm seeing on different asset pairs so that I was, even if Bitcoin was losing value, 
it was losing value at less of a pace than the altcoins that I moved out of. That's the goal. The goal is to always make sure that you can protect your capital. And in moments where all things line up, or as many things as possible possible between support and resistance or confluence of horizontal levels or Fibonacci's or a, a chart pattern or news that aligns with all this as well, breaking certain levels, indicators. When, all the, when things start to line up, then you, you start to make moves. Uh, let's go ahead and close this. This is just uh, in poll. Okay. We've got 282 people in the room, 154 likes. Shout out to everybody in the room. I appreciate you all so very much. Um, if you haven't yet, uh, come over here to the BitLab Academy Twitter page. Give this a follow. Look for the gold check and hit. Give it a follow. Hit this retweet. Hit the like button. You will be entered to win. Uh, we, we'll be drawing. Uh, we'll be drawing either Friday or uh, early next week. Uh, all you have to do is follow, retweet, like uh, this post, and you can also do tomorrow's. Each one, you get an additional entry. So, Livio Capitano, what's up, my brother? Now, everybody. Uh, you all can throw in a couple altcoins, uh, throw in one altcoin, the number one one you want to see, I have some uh, TA on it. I'm going to do uh, some, uh, obviously I'm going to do a bunch of TA here on the charts. Um, Army Piper, are you still in the house? Um, all right. Crypto meme, what's up? I appreciate you following all the way since I was first over there with the Crypto Jeb team. Big love to Crypto Jeb. Love, love that fella. And Tim, working with Tim here now. And uh, uh, it's everybody's just growing and moving forward. I'm loving it. So let's go ahead and look. Uh, where are we going, right? Uh, okay, let's go ahead and look at some TA. You guys want some TA? Algo, let's do some Algo. Everybody. Okay. Let's do Algo. I don't know which, I think it was on this one. Where is, Algo got crushed, man. Algo is something I'm, because it got crushed so hard, I'm looking very heavily at this. So here's a, here's a mindset thing. When you see your assets been crushed really hard and they're still have strong fundamentals, they still have strong use case, and you see an outlier like Gary Gensler just crushing on an, on, on an asset that he used to tout as being amazing, uh, and he also used to tout. What, what the f I need to clean up my list so I can find stuff. Then it might be an opportunity for you to get it at a lower price. And if you got left holding the bag, this is a, an important thing to consider. If you got left holding the bag and you're holding it way up here and it's way down here. This doesn't mean, oh, I'm not going to buy it again until it's up here. By the way, that's the stupidest consideration you could ever have in investing. If you bought something with conviction up here, even if you didn't think it was conviction, maybe you were a dumb dumb, and we're all moving away from being a dumb dumb. Everybody say it with me. I am not a dumb dumb. Dumb dumbs buy hype, and we've all been a dumb dumb, myself included. And we've all sold fear. If you bought here because your friend got rich on this move, and then you still didn't believe it and it dropped, you're like, oh, thank God I didn't buy it. And then it goes up here, and you buy here, you're a dumb dumb. In that moment, you were dumb. And we are going to move past that. We're going to make smart decisions here. If you bought here and now you're realizing, you know, watching this channel, you're learning, you're realizing that you're a dumb dumb. You're like, golly, I have to wait till it gets, you know, 2,464% up before you back it even. Well, you know, and I'm not suggesting anybody does this. This is strategy uh, context. If you bought here and you rode this all the way down here, and there's still solid fundamentals, and it's still a great asset, then if you bought here and bought the, you know, you bought the same, not even dollar value, the same total, say you had 10,000 algo that you bought here, not dollars, but the total algo, and you bought 10,000 here, you'd only have to go up 50% to get back to even, because you just lowered your average entry by half. If you spend the same amount of money that you did here, and bought here. This is, let's see, this is a 95% drop. Okay. So this is, we can do it this way too. This is 20x up. So divide by 20, 
you're going to basically get about 20 times. If you bought 10,000 here, you're going to get a, a huge amount more than that here. And then your average entry gets, you know, all the way down here or something. It's incredible what you can do when you, uh, this, I wouldn't call this DCA because if you bought a top and then a bottom, that's not, in a way, it's dollar cost averaging, but DCA is more thought of like you're buying on a regular basis. But when you're buying over two different points, you're you're basically reducing your average entry on the uh, uh, of that asset. So with Algo, it got crushed by these allegations from uh, Gary Ginsler, and we can see here we've got a couple. We've got this major level right here. Everybody's wondering how low we're we gonna go. Well, we went right about to where the low was from before. We actually wicked beyond it, came back down. Now let's go ahead and look here at the uh we're gonna look. We are on, let's go to the weekly. Okay, money flow is coming out, starting around. This is just uh CMF, check in money flow. Uh you can't see it. See this? Check in money flow, stochastics RSI, and then MACD. Let's go ahead and zoom this out. We did get a cross uh, on the MACD, which is either two momentum averages, fast moving one and a slow moving one, moving average convergence divergence, basically seeing where the momentum's coming out and momentum starting to shift back to the upside, but doesn't have much legs, comes back down, tries again for the upside, comes back down. It looks like it's likely going to not have m much legs here. Uh, it may sort of chop around on the zone before it comes back up. But what we can look at here very easily, and this is for any asset, something drops like this, and you're, you're uh, it's starting to bounce. It's just going to go to the moon. Well, what you can see here is if you're going to take this trade on a long, for instance, if you're going to take this trade on a long, what, what you could do is you come over here to the left-hand bar here. You go to long position. And say you want to enter, say you want to enter if it comes down just, just, uh, just a touch more. Uh, well, then we can go like this. Go ahead and zoom this up here. Now we'll go to auto. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a risk risk to reward. This would be a spot trade. We're going to put our stop loss down here below this line here. If you want to be very conservative, very, very tight, you can make this very, very, very tight stop loss, uh, like, like a 2% or something like that. Uh, but on this trade, I think there's going to be a little bit of chop. I'd, I'd kind of, Maybe you could front run this a bit, but if this comes down, it's likely going to come down and test this again if this does come down. Uh, but there's a strong wick here, so this indicates that there was a lot of bullish sentiment buying into this zone. So I, you know, maybe we could put our stop loss below the wick of this candle here, which is we could see right about right there. It's about five five point eight percent. We could even tighten it just a little more, uh, about five percent. You see, this is just below, yeah, five percent. Now, when we're trying to figure out where where this potentially could go to, draw this down. Well, there's a couple of different levels we need to watch. One is the previous low right before this. This is resistance. Uh, this is support. So coming back up, this is going to be resistance. Another level we need to look for is we come here, we do alt Option F or Alt F, or click over here on the left, go to the Fibonacci retracement tool. Uh, that's an irrelevant level. Hold on. I just clicked on the chart. There we go. We can kind of go like this. So on this trade right here, just on a spot trade with no leverage, this zone right here, that's a 41%. That's a 41% push back to this previous low with, uh, with a, basically a 5% stop loss. If this were to drop, uh, potentially a 5% uh, uh, loss there so the risk to reward there the ratio is 8.32 this is ridiculous risk to reward now we can get a little tighter on this and go just from this zone option f or alt f if you're on pc and go just top to bottom and we can see we can see right here on algo you can do this for any asset we can see right here on algo on this candle alone we may get some sort of relief bounce on this move that comes up it gets rejected at this area right here which is a golden pocket for this move right here. So now we have a, a bit larger of a golden pocket, which look at this, this golden pocket is just above this level here, okay? 
Golden Pocket just above this level. So this zone is going to be very interesting. This 16, 16, three cents up to about 18 cents. This is going to be a very interesting zone. I expect if, if and when, I do think it'll be when, price action on Algorand comes back up, maybe gets a little rejection here. Uh, if Say we get a little bullishness coming into the altcoin market, which I'm not planning on at the moment, but we're talking about how price action typically moves. If this does get back up, probably get rejection here, bounce down here, come up here, and we'll probably be trapped in this zone for a little bit, barring any sort of uh, you know explosive movement through this zone. Why? Because we have this level right here, which is going to be a pretty major zone. Because uh, bounce here, bounce here, come up, rejection here. It's going to probably get a little bit of a rejection at this golden pocket here and trapped in the zone. But before we can even consider that, on this just absolute whip down, right? I mean, this strong velocity to the downside, strong momentum to the downside. Look at this. Expanding momentum. What do I mean by that? Large candle, bearish engulfing candle, meaning we have a bullish candle and this Bearish candle is is much larger than the, the bullish candle that preceded it, meaning the bulls absolutely dominated the narrative here. Shrinking momentum here. See large candles, smaller candles, smaller candle. Now candles getting bigger, a little smaller, bigger, a little smaller, much bigger. Now in this case right here, this is showing a little bit of weakness, but we are on the weekly. Let's go to the daily. So what we're seeing right here, currently on the daily, you see on different time frames, you're getting different pictures. You're seeing... Uh, down stair step are we going to get this next leg down and if so it's going to be right uh, we're going to be testing this 974 uh, 9, 9 9.7 cents uh, right down in this zone right here if this does work its way up and this I'm getting questionable about this because look at this this came up directly to the 382 from this candle drop right here this bounce and got rejected at the 382 suggesting that the bull the bull uh, bullish strength is fairly weak on this retracement suggesting that we have kind of two options that are going to happen here. We potentially can have you sucker. We potentially can have, excuse me, price action come down, got rejected here, have a double bottom right here and then come back up like this. Another little hiccup right here, probably very, very small, very quick. And then uh, when we, this also happens to be right about where the neckline will be for that double W, the double bottom, which typically is a reversal pattern. And then we, then we look at this level right here, which is uh, basically 13.3 to 13.6 level, 13.3 to 13.5 on the golden pocket right here. That's one opportunity. The other opportunity is this comes down just as it has. And as it is right here, comes down and loses this level and comes down. So those are your two options. I would be waiting for this to, for me, because of the weakness in the market, I'd be one waiting for this level right here, this neckline on the on Algorand. And if we take that, then maybe we could enter a trade and be like Eagle Eye Hawks, a little bit of take profit at this level here, which would still be, It'd still be an 8%, 8 to 9% move. And looking at the momentum and making sure there's no divergences and looking at the money flow, we can either choose to take a little bit of profit there or just move our stop loss. Once it starts moving up, say we took the trade like right there. As it's coming, you know, as, as, the, as this is coming up, we take the trade right there. Our stop loss is right below this low. And then as this moves up and it gets in this zone, then we can move the trade. We can move our stop loss up uh up basically tighter to the zone that way we don't necessarily have to take profits but we're saying if this does start to roll over and come down then at least uh then i'll be automatically closed out on the price action coming back down didn't realize my face wasn't on there so we need to just pay attention to that this is true for all assets so let's go ahead and look at let's look at link i was looking at link this morning because, ooh. Looks like we're losing, losing levels here.
Okay, so let's go to the three day. Let's go. So what I'm doing now, I'm looking left on the chart. I'm on the three day on chain link US dollar. You see this, this has been since May, 2022, almost two years, or sorry, almost one year of just sideways range action. Look at this, we're falling into a zone that doesn't have much volume right here. And we've lost this level. Is this going to be a fake out and then a move to the upside? Well, the, the interesting thing about that is we see that this, if we zoom in on this, we see that this is pushed up, rejected, and likely coming down lower. Let me actually, one second. Uh, give me one moment, everybody. So what are the levels here? So this is interesting. You see where this is kind of trapped right here? We do option J. Look at this. Okay. So this has lost this range, but this has also gotten rejected here, and now it's sitting right on these previous highs. So what do we say? Where do we think price action will likely go? Well, let's look at this volume profile right here. Let's look at the volume profile. Let's zoom out. Volume profile suggests, here's a peak right here. You see this peak right here? All these bars, this shows how much volume traded at the respective price directly to the right of it. So less volume, less volume, less volume. You see these bars getting uh, not, a, not as wide. And then more volume, more volume, less volume, less volume. This is how you read this against the price action on the right. And you're seeing levels. You see right here, huge spike. This is the point of control, this line coming out. This is where the most volume is traded on this right here. Now, what we want to do is we see there's a little bit of a hiccup hesitation in price right here. It also has to do right where the volume profile is. And so we can see this also bounces right here. So it looks like there's a bit of a zone right here. And, of course, another one right here. So if it loses $5, I'd be looking uh, at accumulating just north of 375. Let me, uh, I, I'm just changing a little bit of stuff that is going in the, let's see. Give me one second. Uh, what is this? This is three three eighty eight. Three eighty eight. Okay. Sorry, I just had to adjust something. All right, so this is what I'd be seeing on Link. Now, is this just going to be a little bit of a fake out? Because we are riding right on these one, two, three tops. So if we lose the five dollar level, I will be looking at a likely sort of move down to the three eighty three, three eighty, three ninety zone. Uh, I probably would front run this a little bit because this is where the volume shelf comes in right here. What do I mean by shelf? Look at this. It's like you could set a little statue on this shelf here. Another little statue. You fall through these gaps here. These you know value gaps. So this is what I'd be seeing for Link. Let's see, volume profile comes in. Yeah, great, great uh, crypto crank, three, 380 and up. So 380 would be, uh, yeah, about, it's right at the top side of this range. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I'm seeing on, that's what I'm seeing. Now, if we look at the, let's look at the indicators. So we got a blue wave here on the three day. We have a, a on balance volume, uh, we got on balance volume. My mic keeps moving. On balance volume, di bullish divergence. We got a, the last divergence on volume was uh, divergence as well. We have the hidden 
We have the significant movement that was green that is flipping back to just kind of neutral, so we're in a healthy zone, but we're sitting right on this level. I'd be watching very specifically the loss of this level if something happens there. If we look at the four-hour, uh, look at this, rounding top. This is zoomed in, so loss, rounding top. We're sitting right here. Uh, this kind of looks like a very, very basic, uh, not quite, but head and shoulders. You see this? So if this were the case, what does this mean? Well, let's go ahead and measure it out. You come from the top of this head and shoulders to the neckline, neckline meaning the support that all this is bouncing off of. And then we kind of come like this, and we can see the the target out of this is 459. But in reality, uh, in reality on, on link, you see there's nothing traded over here. We're kind of, if we, if we lose this level, we're kind of bouncing at these different levels not much traded. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd be seeing on link. Um, now let's do, let's do some ones we haven't done in a while. Let's do dot. We could see we're going to do the 12 hour. Look at this. Look at this. Just on price action alone. Push up higher, high, lower, low right here, lower high. I love this formula. When you see a push up and all of a sudden you see a lower low, what you want to look for, it doesn't mean immediately exit. If you see a lower low, on the retrace, look for the look for the lower high. And on this case, I bet if I bet if we go like this, uh, sorry, um, let me go like this. If we go from option F from the top to the bottom, what do you know? What do you know? Wouldn't you believe it? I don't know why people don't use this more often. You get the lower low. You draw this as soon as this happens. When this price action happens right here, watch this. If this if 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 this hits this lower low, at this point. At this point, you're like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. Let's do, let's let's put our Fibonacci, okay? Come over here on the left, fib retracement, click up here, and then click down here. And so you're taking it from the top to the bottom, and this gives you a projected projected targets of where the the relief rally or potential stopping points might be if this comes up, if this is going to be bearish. And so what we do, we can come here and we go play. Look at this. Okay, gets a little bit of hesitation at the 382. Pushes up. Okay, you know, I, I'm waiting for that golden pocket. I'm going to take profits at the golden pocket. Oh, is it going to hit the golden pocket? Oh, I believe. I believe. Oh, we get the, look at this. We get the, uh, we get a little bit of a double top. And look at this. Taps right into the golden pocket and rejection. You see that? So utilizing. Utilizing your fibs is such a powerful tool. It's not going to be 100% every time. Sometimes it takes a little bit of the art as well. It takes a little bit of the art of know, being know, knowing where to draw things. But when you see something like this, you get this lower low. All of a sudden, when you're in an uptrend, you get a lower low. <coughs> Excuse me. You get this lower low. And then price action, you know, you draw from the top to the bottom. You get this golden pocket comes down. Now, what we're seeing is an increased velocity to the downside. You see this? This is a push down, push up, push down, and then loss of level, this level right here, major level, option V. And why is this a major level? Look at all this, look at all this interaction across. Bounce, 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 lost. So if we zoom out on this, we see volume coming down over time. Go to auto. Now let's go ahead and turn off market intelligence. Looking just so weak. Uh... So what we're seeing here, uh, option V, sorry, option J. But look at this, bouncing right at previous levels. This is why you look left. It gives you that map. This is looking, this is looking ugly as it can be. Uh, this kind of looks a little bit like a diamond formation, but not quite because this is losing this level already. Uh, okay, neutral. To me, this is looking weak. Option T. See this? Is this turning into... Is this turning into a bit of a descending triangle, flat bottom, descending level of resistance, potentially. If we come down to the two hour, getting a little bit of support here on the momentum indicators, but we're getting bearish divergences on volume, showing volume uh, buyers are not interested in the prices at this level, at the how high the levels are uh, on price. So I'm looking at minimum, I'm looking for dot to like to come down and test 427 to 420. 423 this sort of zone 
right here. Oops. That's what I'm looking for. Potentially, depending on the indicators, depending on the momentum, depending on strength, and potentially a bounce back up into this level here. If we lose this level, then we're going to be looking at lower prices. Uh, and uh, we'll tackle that when we get to it. Uh, yeah, I don't want to go through the whole chart. Um, so option F. So, I mean, look at this. The first FIB extension down is $2.80. Ooh, that'd be a big one. We can also go take a FIB from here. Option F from this zone. So on this move right here, the golden pocket, sorry, not the golden pocket, the 1.618 extension. We're Look at this. We're hesitating right here at the 1.382. The next target down, I don't think this is going to be a lot of support. If the, we lose this 420, uh, lose 420, likely, very likely uh, dip to the 1.618 on this move. I think it's more likely that we'll get something from this larger move. Option F from the bottom to the top. Look at this. We came down. We tested this golden pocket. Push back up, down to the uh, seven eight six. Reject it back at the golden pocket again. Come down to the one one point three eight two at two eighty eight. The one point six one eight is two dollars per dot. So pay attention to that. Uh, let's see. Stacks, I got you, Zeus Cash. Uh, let's go to auto. Double click auto. Three day. Option T. This is how this is how I do my TA. I do it rather quickly. I just no, it doesn't work. Yeah, here we go. Option T. This is it right here. Something in the zone. Get in the zone. We got a bit of a falling channel. A huge spike in interest. This is right about the the ordinals uh, time frame when all that news and press was coming out. Uh, about stacks and uh, ordinals and all that kind of stuff. Huge. And obviously, look at this huge bounce with the volume that matched. Got rejected here. Now, we're looking right here in this zone. Why did we bounce here? Why are we bouncing here? Well, let's look left. Look at all this price interactivity. Rejection at the top side of this. Bounce off of this. Support off this. Rejection at the top side of this. Rejection. So, you're, we're playing right into this narrative. So, option F, top to bottom. Uh, also, look at this. Came down to the lost the golden pocket, bounced at the seven eight six, as Army Piper calls it, a uh, platinum pocket. We bounced to this now. Look at this. We're finding a little bit of resistance uh, right so far, right in the golden pocket. If we if we are able to take this, then I think we will be testing back up into the zone, probably about here, about eighty six cents, uh, which is a pretty large move. But the market is feeling very weak right now, so stacks is a little bit is a little bit joined with Bitcoin based on the, uh, the nature by which the protocol is. Oh, stretch that back, baby. Uh, but if we're not able to take, take this level, I do think we'll you know, be testing back here to the 43 cents range. And then the next level down would, I think would be, a, oops, sorry. Uh, option J would be this. Cause we have a bounce. We have support. We have rejection, rejection. This is sort of a region uh, if we do lose this level, I think we're going to come down at minimum and test the 35 cents. We lose this and we're obviously coming much lower. But as it stands right now, this is just a push up. It's a bit of a bull flag, but this is starting to get rather long. Um, uh, if this is able to break past this, then yeah, we will be looking at uh, 77 cents, 77 to 86 cents. Uh, now, if we look at the indicators, we have a very blue Momentum very undervalued and it's still blue on this push-up. So maybe there's a little more hope here than I thought. We're looking at the three-day though. Let's look at the four hour. Let's get a better landscape of what's going on. So on the four hour, look at this. We're getting actually a broadening wedge right here. Option T. A bit of a broadening wedge. It's slightly angled to the downside. So this actually leans a little bit more bullish. But oh, we got a couple things here. Option T, we have the we have the uh, relative extrema getting a bit of a, you know tightening here which is not necessarily a signal but we're seeing a, a you know a tightening here with momentum sort of shifting to the upside but we had the we had a bearish divergence on volume and now we're getting the on the four hour we had is it still yeah we're getting overheated signs right here 
and this is coming right into this level of resistance. And look at this. We got a very we have expanding momentum to the upside, meaning these candles push sideways, larger push sideways, larger push sideways, smaller push. And the smaller push is coming right into the zone of where this resistance level is. So if I were to guess, I think we likely get a rejection here and we can look at a rejection here and coming down and either finding if there's any sort of more of a bullish narrative than finding a finding a bounce at the 55, 56 uh, cent level. Uh, if we don't find that support, which is this previous high, high and low right here, option J, we see this right here. If we're not able to hold this, then I think we're coming back down and testing the 45 cent, 45, six level. That's what I'm seeing there. Uh, you a real G married AF. All right, let's see what else we got. I mean, what, what we got, what we got on the likes, likes, dislikes, all that kind of stuff. We got 230 people in the room, 200 likes. Let's get those likes up. Everybody in the room, do it right now. We'll have more likes than we have people in the room. Let's break some records in here, baby. Uh, if you haven't yet, make sure. I want you all to have the opportunity to win. Uh, come over here to, where's it at? Come over here to the BitLab. Make sure you're following me right here at Kelly Kellum, K-E-L-L-Y-K-E-L-L-A-M. Mods will throw the link in chat. Uh, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, I'll just do it right here. Uh, give me a follow. I just want to make sure you're not following the incorrect people. Um, and come over to the BitLab Academy page. We still got a couple more charts we're going to be doing. Come over to the BitLab Academy page, which is at Academy BitLab. It's got the gold check and the hit logo. Give us a follow. Hit the retweet. Hit the like button. You'll be entered to win. I think we'll do another $100 giveaway. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and by the way, anybody that hadn't joined yet, you can still get, head over to bitlabacademy.com. The code is going to be expiring the, uh, after this weekend. Give me 30 for 30% off the all access. If you, want it, if you want the BitLab Pro, BitLab Pro is already 30 or 40% off every month because it has everything. And because it's a pack, if you get everything, you get a discount all the time. Uh, and it brings brings a whole total under under $100. Uh, yeah, and that's for everything, by the way. The, the, the BitLab Academy itself is quite affordable. So now let's come over here. Let's look at the last couple things here. What's the dominance looking like? Uh, boom, boom, pushing higher, making waves. What's the traditional assets looking like? Uh, load layouts, trad markets. Dollar. Dollars looking... Looking like a descending triangle. So we have descending level of resistance, flat level of support, option T right here. Uh, so this very well, I, I, this to me looks like it's making an attempt to come up here and reject off this and then probably come down and, and then come back to the $100, 188 range and then potentially lose it and come down to the next level down here to the $97, uh, 90, 97 cents range. Um. And this is the risk on the barometer kind of of markets and the risk on risk off narrative. Um, look at this. NASDAQ. NASDAQ looking like it's trying to break out of this W formation right here. And look at this mini W within it. Look at this. Double, look at this W. This is crazy. A W, a W, and a W. This is showing all signs that it's trying to push higher on the smaller time frames and on this daily. You have multiple double bottoms within a double bottom, and this is just now trying to crack past option J. Just now trying to crack past. There we go. Just now trying to crack past this neckline. If we're able to break past this uh, on the NASDAQ, it's showing a lot of strength. Uh, a lot of strength. We got bearish divergence with uh, momentum signals uh, undervalued. Really interesting there. So let's go back over to the digital assets. Let's see what's going on in here. By the way, I will be doing TA again. I'll be doing TA today on BitBoy Crypto. So come over there. Show some positive love. Uh, come to bat for me when people make stupid comments in there. But do it respectfully. Do it nice. Um, and Bitcoin. Oh, that's not what I want to look at. Dax. <laughs> okay, file. Uh, we looked at Filecoin yesterday. I want to look at AVAX. Where's my AVAX? 
Crazy. Too many lines. Okay, let's delete some lines. Okay. This is looking weak. All this, this is coming down, and it's kind of the wick came down and got eaten up really quick down to this level. So this is, uh, this is hard to read because as it stands right now, as it stands right now, it looks like, let's go ahead and delete this. Go ahead and delete this. Get a little clarity. As it looks right now, this looks like it is attempting to do, you know, is this going to go like this or is this going to go like this? Well, as it stands, we have more conflicting signals. Bearish divergence on the hidden volume with uh, undervalued signals and all the momentum indicators. Coming over here to the MACD, RSI, money flows trying to come back up. This is indicating to me momentum indicators reset. What we're seeing right here, option T, come down here. We've got a trend line here. RSI is fully reset at the bottom, giving it a lot of room to run. When you're trying to figure out if, if there's more room for price to go down, if the, if the RSI is still way up here and we're getting a little correction and the, the uh, strength indicators are coming down, money flow is coming down, then you're probably, it's probably a good signal that you want price to come a bit lower uh, or, or trade sideways for long enough for the RSI and strength to reset down at these lower levels. Because you see when this happens, resets the lower levels, reset the lower level, and we, we get a strong bounce. It gives you a lot of room to push the engine, a lot of room to run. This has taken a long time to do this. Not really that long, but uh, since April 15th. So, yeah, about, a, about, a, about two months, a little over two months. Now we're fully reset down here. We have the trend line much lower, uh, this resistance level on the RSI. It's stochastics are reset all the way down here. We have bullish divergence. Look at this, option T from this low to this low to this low, uh, higher low here. And look at this, same zone, option T from this, uh, that's not, not there, from this spot here. See, this is the same spot. This is a lower low and this is a higher low. So there's strength coming into this level, although price has fallen. So this indicates to me, we might get a little bit of a uh, uh, invert, inverted Barton, uh, uh, I almost said Barton shoulders, inverted Bart Simpson pattern, which means we have a quick liquidity washout consolidation and a quick short squeeze back up to where we're at right here. That's what I'd be looking for, for uh, AVAX is most likely because of the nature of this right here. And we have basically, as uh, as uh, CryptoFace calls it, anchor wave and a trigger wave on the uh, money flow here where we have a lower low and a higher low. So we have a bullish divergence here on the money flow as well as the stochastics. So this is indicating to me that we, we're at least going to get an attempt a push up option F. We can go uh, at least a push up uh, to, you know, these levels here, 1349, which is a golden pocket of this move. If we want to make it a little more conservative, we can do just that candle. So 12, uh, sorry. Yeah, $13 to 1330 uh, at minimum uh, coming up uh, if, if this does break to the upside. We have to watch, though, as this pushes up, does RSI get rejected at this level? But... That's what I'm seeing. I uh, love you all. Make sure you head over to bitlabacademy.com. Uh, you know, click enroll, enroll now, which is going to be right here where mine says my accounts because I'm logged in. So enroll now. You'll come to this page. If you want BitLab Pro, sign up right here. You, I mean, it's you get, I think it's like 140 something dollars for everything we have, plus the plus Discord, plus the AMAs, plus the plus the indicators, plus the all access to courses. But when you get the pro, you get it for $97 every month. If you want to just get the all access, come right here, hit I want all access. You can use give me 30, you get 30% off uh, your first month. Uh, that's all I got to say. I, I love you all. I appreciate you all. I want you all to grow and learn from your mistakes and share them here and I'll share mine. And we can do this together. We can... When we're, feeling when we're feeling the struggle, when we're feeling frustrated, when we're feeling loss, rebalance your mind to what am I grateful for? Where can I improve? What's my next step from this moment? And that will generate you so much, uh, so much calm in the moment so that you at least can focus on this next step, not always having to know what's at the end of the line. Just focus on that next step you can improve, you can do right now today to improve your situation in this moment, whether it's sitting in a room quietly breathing, whether it's petting a dog, whether it's, uh, you know, doing anything to change the course of action if you're not happy with uh, what's happening in your situation. But with that, I love you. Heading over to BitBoy Crypto. Adios. Hit that like button. I'll see you in the next episode.
Adios muchachos. Thank you for coming. Thank you for always tuning in. BitLiveAcademy.com. Hit that like button, sucker.